Greetings viewers, Nathai here with the first commentary of 2022 and what a treat I have to start off the new year with you. Today I'll be covering two videos. And the first video is from a YouTuber with no grave username whatsoever called Pokeball who did a list of the most evil Pokemon characters. And the second video is from a user called Pokemon Ranger Boy 12 on what he considered to be the worst moments of the Pokemon Journeys anime last year. So let's get into it, shall we? Ready up! Kick the baby! Kick the baby! Kick the baby! Both the Pokemon games and the anime series feature a variety of trainers and gym leaders. Most of them appear to be the type of Pokemon trainers who have successfully controlled and defended their gyms for a long time. They sure exude charisma and confidence, but some of them are actually the worst. They have been horrible to their Pokemon. I know this is a cliche, but keep this part in mind, especially the part about mistreating their Pokemon. Number 8. Dawn. First on our list is Dawn. She is one of the main characters in the Pokemon anime, and so one would expect her to do well as a Pokemon trainer. Her skills as a trainer are mostly focused on her role as a Pokemon coordinator, in which she enters Pokemon into competitions. However, her battle skill and victory percentage in Pokemon contests aren't as good as one might assume, despite the fact she grows stronger and more determined as the series progresses. Number 7 Yeah, you saw that. He gave us the bare bones of Dawn's character, then moved on to the other evil character on his list. Doesn't anybody point out any of her character flaws? Just said she doesn't live up to her potential and moved on. So I'm just curious. How does this make her an evil character? Or is your definition of evil a 10 year old rookie coordinator who doesn't know how to flawlessly win contests? Fun fact, I decided to hit this video when I saw Faulkner in his thumbnail. Before I sat down to watch this, I thought to myself, if he considers Faulkner evil because he has an edgy boy haircut, I'm gonna give this dude such a smack. But, well. Faulkner. Faulkner is an excellent example of a specific combat blunder that a trainer might make. When Ash confronts him for the Violet City gym badge, he fights with several powerful Pokemon. Well, damn. I had no clue who Hoots was such a force to be reckoned with. He uses a Pidgeot in particular, which is a difficult Pokemon to defeat. While Ash and his Charizard struggle against the Pidgeot, they eventually defeat it thanks to the Pidgeot's predictable fight patterns, which a smarter trainer could have easily avoided. Now, at first I assumed he was going to call Fogner evil for using his flying type Hoot Hoot against Ash's Chikorita, which is a grass type, even though Ash was dumb enough to use her against a Pokemon she was weak against. But since he surprisingly didn't do that, I am instead going to pick on him for his editing. Yeah, apparently this guy doesn't care enough about his editing to show us on screen what he's describing. Or I don't know, should we just call Pikachu Charizard and Hoot Hoot Pidgeot from now on? It was at this point I told myself, this has to be bait or something. There is no way that someone could be this lazy with editing and still think that it's good enough to put on YouTube. There is no reason I can think of about why we aren't seeing Charizard fight Pidgeot while he is talking about Charizard fighting Pidgeot. Number 6 Six, Gary Oak. Gary Oak is most likely an unexpected addition to this list. He is Ash's major rival throughout the series. The two literally grew up together and became rivals at an early age. And in comparison to Ash, his achievements are quite amazing. However, Gary is rarely seen winning matches in the series, and after losing to Ash, he quits training to become a Pokemon researcher almost immediately. This kind of made him a bad sport. Okay, did you actually watch Johto Photo Finish? I haven't seen that episode in years, but I can tell you right now that there was nothing to imply. And Gary decided to become a Pokemon researcher because he was sour over losing to Ash at the Silver Conference. He decided to become a Pokemon researcher because he felt that there was a lot more he could do as a researcher than a trainer. Also, considering the off-screen character development he underwent prior to Johto, this Gary isn't the same character who thought he was an unbeatable super star and went out of his way to be a dick to Ash. Next he talks about Anthony, a one-off trainer from an episode of the original anime. In said episode, Anthony is obsessed with winning a competition for fighting type Pokemon known as the Grand Prix and is neglecting his family. Yeah, it's a dick thing to do but it hardly makes him evil. If anything, it's more obsessive and self-centered. Pokeball doesn't even make the joke about Anthony tricking Ash into giving away his primate after it won the Grand Prix like a lot of other people have. The fourth spot is Lieutenant 
intense surge, and yeah. I can agree that he was a jerk who pretty much brutalized Challenger's Pokemon with his Raichu. However, at the end of the day, he was just a bully whose actions never went beyond his gym. So, not evil. <laughs> now, if you would actually thought out a criteria to include the games, anime, and Pokemon Adventure manga, Surge would qualify to be on this list because... Spoilers. Surge was a member of Team Rocket, who used his Pokemon to attack the SSN and threw protagonist Red overboard after having paralyzed him. Uh, since you're just going with the anime here, yeah, no, being a bully and saying you should evolve your Pikachu as soon as you get one, don't really qualify as evil. <laughs> Number three. Jesse, James, and Meow. Team Rocket's most infamous trio are poster kids for how not to be Pokemon trainers, and they are without a doubt the most recognizable example on the list. However, their relationship with their own Pokemon is more mixed than bad. While Lickitung and Wobbuffet are mistreated, Jesse and James have developed close bonds with Pokemon like Ekans and Coffee. The issue, though, is how they use their Pokemon. Jesse, James, and Meowth use their Pokemon for theft and other crimes including stealing Ash's beloved Pikachu. Thankfully, they rarely succeed in their evil schemes. While Jesse and James may have occasionally verbally abused their Pokemon in the original series, mainly Jesse's well with it when she first got him, and even then they came to see him as a fourth member of the team eventually, it's shown that by the Diamond and Pearl arc that Jesse and James cared so much about their Pokemon that James was willing to give his Cacnea to Gardenia so it could train to become stronger, and Jesse released her dust tox because she decided she would be happier in the wild with the male dust talk she had met earlier that day. Hell, they released Arbok and Weezing and Hoenn, telling them to protect a group of their unevolved forms from a poacher. They even threw themselves at the guy's Tyranitar to buy enough time so they could escape. Yes, distant teams are criminals who repeatedly try to steal other people's Pokemon or illegally capture wild Pokemon. Uh, there have been episodes to imply that the only reason they're a part of Team Rocket is because they feel they have no better options. Options. James ran away from home to escape an arranged marriage set up by his controlling parents, and what we see from the snippets of Jessie's past, it's implied that everything she tried to do with her life before Team Rocket ended in either absolute failure or disappointment. Post that, there's also Meowth's reason for being a part of Team Rocket. He's pretty much been on his own since he can remember, and when he met a female Meowth who seemed to prefer the company of humans, Meowth pretty much underwent a pseudo-evolution so he could walk on his hind feet and talk like a human, but was rejected by that Meowth who called him a freak. It's sort of obvious that Meowth craves acceptance, since in the early days he called himself the top cat, i.e. the favorite pet of Giovanni, and resents Giovanni's Persian for taking that spot away from him. There's also the undeniable fact that Jesse, James, and Meowth are emotionally attached to each other and view each other as legit friends rather than just teammates. They are by far the least evil agents to come out of Team Rocket. Up next are the Kaz and Kaz gyms who use their Pokemon in the type of Turf War and Dark City. And yeah, both groups are pretty bad, allowing their Pokemon to run around and cause collateral damage to the town. The Kaz gym also used their Pokemon against Ash when he refused to join them. And it's likely that the Kaz gym would have done the same, so yeah. Neither side is really that great. But if I can play Giratina's advocate here, the reason for the Turf War was because both sides thought that they deserved to become an official Pokemon gym. They weren't wrecking Dark City for the lulls. Both sides also came off as being unable to tell the difference from Pokemon battles to regular street fighting, and literally begged her nurse Joy after she had scolded them to teach them how to change their behavior. By the end of the episode, Yaz and Kat are seen repairing all the damage their fighting had done to the city. If they were truly evil, they wouldn't have cared what their actions had caused and just kept fighting. Till the year, they were more dumb than evil. The number one spot is Giovanni, and the only problem I have with this section is that he's the only character on the list who is truly evil. <laughs> Party, 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 I wanna have a party. I need to have a party. You better have a party. 
Now let's talk about a moment that isn't so divisive, which is go catching Grookey. Many fans really hated this moment right here, because a lot of us expected Ash to catch this Gen 8 starter, since it's one of the longest traditions in the history of the Pokemon anime that Ash receives at least one starter. Sadly, that didn't really happen. For the first time ever, Ash hasn't received a starter, and instead Grookey joins Go. In hindsight, it really would have been better if Grookey was Ash's Pokemon, because then at least he would have gotten some development and actual character. I'm sorry, what? What's wrong with Grookey's character by simply being Go's Pokemon rather than Ash's? Is it because Grookey doesn't participate in battles and is simply a companion Pokemon to Go? That's really the vibe I'm getting from that statement. Even if Grookey had become Ash's Pokemon, how would his character really been that different? And I'm aware that this is his opinion, but the issue I take here is he doesn't explain his reasoning about why Ash should have caught Grookey, other than it being a tradition for Ash to have at least one starter in his party. <laughs> The next moment actually is one of those rare occasions where I saw most of the fandom actually criticizing it rather than defending it, aka the handling of Grizzle's evolution. In context, before Go's Pokemon reached his final evolution stage, he spent over 4 months, literally 4 months, doing nothing but crawling in his cave. No training, no battles, showcase of character or development. Yeah, because he was depressed he didn't become an Intellian. You know, the evolution he was impressed with and aspired to become. Hell, that actually showed a good bit of character for Go, not forcing Drizzile out of his little cave, and just be happy he evolved at all. Instead, he understood why Drizzile was depressed. I know that there was a major gap between episodes, but the episode where Drizzile finally evolves showed him coming out of his cave at night and training when no one was around, showing that he had moved past his sulking. Last but not least, the one moment in 2021 that literally broke the Annie Poco fandom. Go catching the legendary super and in my honest opinion, this one right here was the absolute worst of 2021 for several reasons. Go already was regarded as a poorly written and rushed character, and this moment not only confirmed that issue, but it also intensified the already growing hate towards Go, with him aka a novice, a newbie, catching a legendary within 53 episodes of his first season. It also made many fans feel like as if the Pokemon company is constantly pushing Go down our throat without actually establishing him. Him, while constantly sidelining Ash. There wasn't really any logical justification for Go to catch this Pokemon. And I know, right? It's not like that Poachers have been polluting the streams to lure Suicune to them, or that Suicune have been poisoned by their poison type Pokemon attacking it. Not like Go catching Suicune was more of a spur of the moment thing, and the only thing you could think of to save Suicune from the Poachers. Oh, wait. <laughs> Also, I'm not gonna try and speak for the entire Pokemon fandom, but I know there were quite a number of people a few decades ago who got tired of Ash being shoved down everyone's throats whenever the anime decided to adapt to the latest games. Hell, the only time we ever see protagonists that had absolutely nothing to do with Ash or his friends was in the first three episodes of Pokemon Chronicles. And sure, Go may not have had as much development as, say, Dawn, Serena, or anyone Ash been in Alola, but you make it sound like Goose had absolutely no development since his debut. I huh, didn't know you had to have development to be able to capture a legendary Pokemon. But to be fair to you, yes, it happened too early in the episode, and Suicune didn't appear to take that much damage. Certainly not enough damage to be caught in a simple Pokeball. However, the context of the situation matters, which you really don't talk about. You just seem mad that Go caught Suicune, period. Final thoughts time. Pokeball, you really had zero criteria. While you said you were talking about how evil trainers mistreat their Pokemon, your standards for being evil seem to range from not living up to their potential, quit being a Pokemon trainer, and being a big meanie. The only character who truly met your criteria was Giovanni. Considering the amount of villains that the Pokemon anime has had over the years, this could and should have been a far better video than it actually was. For example, two characters I can think of who would fit on this list would have been Pokemon Hunter J and Cyrus, who's the leader of Team Galactic. They're so unrepentantly evil that they're two of the very rare characters that the anime actually kills off. 
Yeah, let's imply in the games and the X and Y anime that the team player leader Lysander was killed. Then there's the problem that I pointed out with your editing, leading me to believe that you really don't pay attention to the footage you use for your videos. My advice? Actually put some thought into your content. Use the footage that actually goes along with your audio. Make sure the characters you're talking about actually fit the video's criteria, or actually just have a criteria to begin with, and actually explain why they're on the list in more than four to six sentences. Ranger Boy. I understand that this is an opinionated list, but in the three segments I highlighted here, you either didn't explain your reasoning well enough, or seem to misunderstand why things were happening. The next time you do a video talking about the journey's anime, I would recommend repeating viewings of an episode to make sure that the points you're making are as solid as possible. With all that said, this is Night at Ice saying thanks for watching and please share your thoughts with me.